welcome, welcome, welcome to Say Like a Champ, episode 256. It's your boy, A-Dub. Hey, boy, it's Tricky. What's up, Slack fam? Welcome back, everybody. Back yeah. in the building. <laughs> What's good, fam? Oh, man. Another Tuesday, um, and time is just flying by. I feel like we just sat down and talked, but uh, lots of different things to catch up on, lots of good things to look forward to. But before we do, want to welcome in everybody. As always, we love having you guys with us and being a part of the show. So if you're watching live, don't hesitate to drop those comments. Let us know. Uh, you're watching where you're watching from if you uh, and then also if you have any thoughts on the, the topics you know what I'm saying uh, just just holler out at us um, before we get going though let's do our check-in as always Strizzy how you feeling today what's good dude I'm doing good man like I, I, I don't know if I told you about camera if it happened I don't know if it happened I don't know if I texted to you actually but um, yeah you know I got some got some good news you know what I'm saying uh, late last week the uh you guys have probably saw I've done a couple of videos for this clothing company called Kufandi, um, just within the last you know six months or so. And um, you know, it's a collaboration thing, so they, they've kind of paid me per video. Um, we just kind of increased the uh like the pay per video, so like you know, make more money per video now, which is dope. They they doubled it and That's then uh, their annual their annual uh it was called fashion show is in New York every year. And uh, they they in, they invited your boy out for it's in, in New York till um, or in September early September, and uh, basically it's an all expense paid vacation. You know what I'm saying? So I'll get like you know my hotel, the the room, travel, and the uh, like the like you know cars and stuff like that or whatever. Like everything's gonna be paid for. Yeah, uh, and then they'll also pay me for for the the video they want me to put together for them uh, um, as well. So. Um, that was huge news. It's funny because I, I think their base is based out in China. So, you know, anytime they email me, I get it at like, you know, 1230 at night, I, I, you know, at the earliest, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. I woke up to it, you know what I mean? So it was um, really, really cool news. It's just like the, probably the biggest thing that's happened to me as since I've been a content creator over the last like three, three plus years now, you know what I mean? Kind of started when COVID started, but um, I'm super excited about it. You know what I mean? I'm trying not to get overly excited. A lot can happen yeah. in a couple of months, but you know, as of right now, it is a kind of it is a thing. So uh, I'm excited about it, man. I'm super happy. You can't wait. That's what's up, man. Yes, absolutely. That is so dope. Some congrats coming in the comments, and just Thank you know, you for me, personally, yeah, just yeah. so proud of you, man. Like you know, we've man. known we've known each other for for a very very long time. We're super since, long time since like 06, 07 days. Yeah. So we've known each other a long time, and um, you know even before the content stuff, but we got together on some content and we, we started this podcast. You started your thing. If you're not following Strizzy, you know, if you're on the TikTok, make sure you're on his TikTok on IG as well on his YouTube. Um, and yeah, you, you talked about, you know, just being consistent and, and that these type of things would happen for you one day. So yeah. um, super blessed to be able to see the journey. And then also to, uh, to be able to congratulate you, man, and, and root you on, dude, that's so dope. So I'm, I'm super yeah. excited. Yeah, that yeah, is man, I mean, good too. Like, I appreciate all the slackers, and I get a lot of love from slacks. You know, Kelly's always, you know, laughing at me on on Instagram and and things of nature. You know, on my in my my stories and all my videos and stuff like that. And you know, Anne as well going on there and commenting and you sharing my videos and stuff like that. So, you know, what I'm saying you guys, you guys play a really big part because I, I don't think a lot of people who are starting to to content create realize like how 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 long those those shares and the engagement and stuff like that goes. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you guys are, are a monstrous part of my success, our success, you know, with the podcast and everything. So I really do appreciate all the all the love and stuff we've gotten over these, these last couple of years. So just another kind of, you know, humbling experience, you know. Yeah. Just to remind, you know, remind me, you know, who, you know, who's behind us and all that kind of stuff like that. So um, yet again, you know, extremely blessed to be where I'm at and appreciate everybody for real. Absolutely. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. So very excited to hear more about that. And um and definitely kind of we'll we'll be able to get that real life behind the scenes view of, of how that goes. So yeah, very exciting, very exciting. Um, well, I couldn't think of a better way to start off the show, so we'll go ahead and get things kick off real quick. Do want to welcome in Ant? We yep. got Kelly in the building as well, Stephanie Washington, and Pops on the comment board so far. So sure. thank you all for being here with us as always. And um, mm -hmm. another another episode of Slack. Let's see what we got in store uh, this time. Let me put up the screen real quick. We can get things going. And our first topic, we're going to jump into basketball. A little bit of Team USA. LeBron going to be the flag carrier for the U.S., which is super dope. There's only, you know, one male and one female when they do the opening ceremonies. That's going to be on Friday. Yeah. Um, this obviously not taken from a real uh, ceremony, but like after the game, the gold medal game or whatever. So 
Um, and he'll also be looking a lot different this time around for sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's yeah. a years, years gone by since then. But um, uh, I wanted to talk real quick about the – I think it is cool that LeBron is going to be carrying it. I know a lot of times – I think this is actually the first time a men's basketball player has gotten to carry the flag. Right. I, I, uh, I think so, too. It's, it's you know, usually like, about it. Yeah, like yeah. somebody from like a different sport or somebody that like the Olympics is like the highest level they're going to compete at. Right. So, but it's pretty cool. Um, obviously, this will be you know LeBron's last last go round, and, yeah. and he's definitely you know a, a big figure in, in American sports. So I think that's dope. Um, but what did you think about him him getting that honor? I think it's dope. Like you said, you know, sometimes if you kind of take the what we might call the little things for granted, you know what I mean? Like you said, it's the first time I think a USA basketball player has done it. We see we see Olympic swimmers do it all the time. You know, Michael Phelps got to do it. Uh, we, you know. The runners, for sure. The runners do it all the time yeah. as well. So, you know, to see LeBron do it, you know, one of the biggest figures, if not the biggest figure in basketball ever, depending on who you're talking to, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, being able to hold it, I'm sure that's a really big deal to him. And, you know what I'm saying, he carrying the team, he might as well carry the flag, you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And that's what I wanted to jump into, him carrying the team, which I think it's pretty cool that he's actually been assertive in the ex- exhibitions now. Of course, these yeah. are just these exhibition games, but they did go 5-0, and oh, but – some shaky times, man, especially the game against South Sudan, which they were down by one point with seven seconds or no, like 12 seconds to go. They had to do a, a little bit of a game winner there and LeBron yeah. coming through with the clutch layup. But uh, South Sudan, like that would have been – that's still like the biggest like game ever in, like, in, in their history of basketball. They have really not competed at a national level that much. So yeah. it's crazy to see that. But this isn't the scorched earth that we wanted to see. Are you concerned about uh, Team USA? Of course I am. I was gonna, you know, I, I think I, you know. Obviously, we sent the this kind of C team, maybe the B plus C C plus team to the FIBAs, right? So mm-hmm. this is what we wanted. We wanted to see our big stars again back in in in, um, in the USA. And I think you know, Ant said, I love Ant's comment. He said the world has arrived in basketball, and although he's right, I'm still kind of like this team should still be rolling over people right like we're yeah you know we're looking at that like we barely beat germany too even though they're the FIBA champions like you know their best player is you know a bench player in the nba you know depending on the team he's playing maybe a starter on on a lower team you know what i'm saying and right you know south sudan you know hats off to them man i i I, I, I swear this was a 30-point victory. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I swear it was a 30-point victory. The actual line, like the betting odds, uh, U.S. was favored by 42 points going into right, the game. Right, exactly. And um, they literally gave it to USA like the entire game. They, this, like this this, like, this wasn't something where they came back and, you know, you know because they got lapsed. Like, no, nah, like they gave it to them the entire game. So, so shout out to them. And then, you know, Australia too. Like they've got some couple of NBA players on that team as well. But you just – you know, I can't think about, you know, a guy from, you know, the guys that they have in Australia shouldn't also have given them that big of a problem. You know what I'm saying? And right. so, yeah, like if I was, if I was the, you know, the USA team, like I'd be worried. Like I, if I'm LeBron, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, your, your attitude, your, uh, your focus, things of that nature. Um, <laughs> y'all already know we're talking about this for a really, really long time. And I'm glad the rest of the world started seeing it these last couple of years with, uh, with uh, Golden State, but people are really talking about how Steve Kerr is not a very good coach. You know what I'm saying? He's been pretty lucky these last couple of years. So um, I wish Spo was coaching. I, I think he'd do a better job. Um, in all seriousness, you know, after you know, since Coach K retired, you know, with his last couple couple of Olympics. Yeah. Um, but I think one of the things that I've I've enjoyed watching so far is like some of these players, like one Spo getting his hands on them. So I, I, it's it's just like I said, I love seeing a good coach coach yeah. you know what i mean so you know watching him get his hands on Ant and watching Ant do things that he doesn't normally do kind of the same thing he did with lebron how lebron was like i'm not getting in the post and he kind of forced him and now it's one of his greatest greatest go-to spots and moves you know what i mean so right you know seeing seeing anthony edwards work with spo and even watching ad work with spo and instead of him shooting three three pointers entire practice he's actually he's actually playing in the post and playing like really really solid defense yeah um, you know those are the other things that i love seeing and I'm I'm getting really scared and, and tired of seeing all of these bams the Laker trade scenarios because him and LeBron are just playing so damn well. Uh, he's not allowed to go. Y'all can have Gene, y'all can have Bam. <laughs> I know. I was gonna bring that up. I was yeah. seeing some of those Lakers uh, Lakers uh, you know 
maybe going after Bam now. And yeah. he's been playing well alongside of AD too, which that, – Yeah, that's a big thing too. But it's crazy to see how, like, LeBron and Bam are, like, basically the same size though. Like, when you see them play together, it's kind of yep. interesting – uh, the way that's Bam just plays so bigger. That's why I'm excited for the rookie we drafted because I'm hoping that he'll play the center position. Like he's a pretty tall kid. He's lanky. He's actually a really good shot blocker. Um, you know, down low. He's done. He's done a lot to learn. Uh, shout out to my boys. They just won the the you know the summer league championship. But shout out to them. Yeah. Um, but he played really really well in that game. Memphis had a lot of sophomores in that game, so I'm actually surprised we won. And. Uh, so I'm hoping we can get Bam to, to center. You know what I mean? A lot of centers are a power forward because he, he is. He's a small yeah. dude. He's like 6'9", 6'10". So um, I, I'd love to see him in his natural role, especially now that he's shooting a lot more threes. Yeah, for sure. It is interesting to see them play differently, but I definitely think LeBron is equating the results of this to his legacy. And I feel like he has been way more assertive than, than normal to try to make sure that they cross the line. You know, yeah, um, they got to sure. get it done. They got to get it done. For sure. Pop says they are no dream team, shouldn't be struggling against these biscuit teams. And, and it's true. It's like, you know, and like you kind of said, it, it is the coaching that makes a difference. Obviously, we have a stacked roster, but some of these other teams, right, they are like playing together. They're teammates. They like run plays and stuff. Yeah. Um, some of our guys, you can't just totally throw them out there and just expect them to like figure it out on their own because mm -hmm. the world is catching up and, and is better, like, like Anthony said. Also, he said they need to pick like Brooke Lopez. They keep going too small, some big men. Which would be kind of interesting because some of these other countries do have people that they, they kind do. of use as like more of a bruiser type, you know. A lot of, I feel like a lot of the other countries, you know, obviously America has majority of the, the skill guys, right? Like you look at this roster and you're like, God, like how are we struggling like this? But a lot of like, you know, Serbia's and, and the Germany's and, you know, those teams, like they all have like the big men from the right. NBA, you know what I mean? They got a lot of big guys from the NBA, you know, Dice and obviously Joker and, and things of that nature. So, um, you know, Canada's going to come back. They're going to be better. But in my opinion, they probably have one of the more skilled teams as well. Um, we see, we've seen what Germany has been doing these last, you know, these last couple of games. And, you know, I, I, I give uh, Dennis a hard time, you know, being a, a bench player, but dude's playing tenacious, tenacious defense. You know what I mean? Like he's on whoever he's guarding tough. So, you know, they just going to get in that same mindset. Like the, these guys think about, you know, world champion stuff's way more than they probably think about say the basketball one and right the usa needs to get into that mode because like if they come in and they lose and for every reason they're not playing for gold like it's embarrassing like we we talked that like the reason why most of these guys are here is because we got our butts kicked in fibas you know what i mean if you guys come right. in butt kicks too i'm sorry but the best player on the team right now should not be a 39 year old lebron james right <laughs> it right. just shouldn't be yeah, no, I feel that. I feel that. And it would be a long wait uh, until the next Olympics if they do lose. <laughs> right. Um, I mean, it's just, uh, yeah, they got to do it. But I think they're starting to feel that pressure and that they'll ramp it up for sure. Gotcha. Um, but, yeah, it's their next uh, couple games or their their set games actually start. So with the opening ceremonies Friday, their first game is actually Sunday. Yeah. Um, and so that should be pretty cool. They're playing Serbia. They're also playing South Sudan and they're playing Puerto Rico. Those are the ones in their groups. So they should easily move on to their group. But I'm talking about – no losses would be acceptable. I hope that that uh, South Sudan game, that they get them back a little bit because they caught them by surprise and sure. it almost beat them and, and probably should have beat them, uh, honestly. Yeah. For sure. Um, For sure. But, uh, but uh, you know, USA kind of lucked out on that one. But LeBron misses that layup. It's a wrap. Yeah. They picked this team based on small NBA instead of international game. I think that's definitely true. Like, if this is, like, a more of an NBA all-star game, but the NBA plays a little differently – pace you know what i'm saying like yeah. the the way the the way the game is played is is not quite the same and it's kind of funny where it's like the rest of the world might be trying to catch up to us because they play a little bit more old school but the old yeah. school is working against this new school for, running real. Guns. for real so, so true um, very interesting to see i saw something too that uh uh tyrese halliburton minutes is like completely depleted like he hasn't really got any playing time and you know, I, I feel like one of the things that Team USA needs is an actual playmaker. You know what I mean? I feel like they yeah. need an actual point guard to come in and open the offense. So him not getting any plays has been kind of annoying. If, if playmaking ability was really going to be an issue or you're worried about things like he doesn't play very good defense or whatever the case may be, then you know maybe he should have been in the first place. Maybe you bring somebody in like you know, we talked about Kyrie kind of getting snubbed. You know what I mean? Like yeah. another another veteran guard yeah, who can handle playing around these guys and, you know, you know, I was going to ask you the question and, and uh, the slackers a question. 
is you know based on some of the games that you've seen or have like who would be your who would be your starting five like who would your starting five be man that's kind of tough cuz i feel like right now it's kind of what been like edwards booker curry LeBron. jason tatum got some run yeah LeBron. Um, or jason tatum no uh I, yeah i don't know i just think yeah, i think he started against serbia and okay Australia. so yeah, I don't know. I think that would be a tough one. I think definitely, though, you got to have LeBron, Curry, yeah. Yeah. Tatum. And then I guess they've been I, – I don't know if I would start Bam, but I would probably start AD at the center. Yeah. And who do you have? Because Curry's really not your guard, right? They're playing him as the point guard, but he's not really handling the ball like that. Yeah. So, mine is mine is very, very similar to yours. I for my who's your guard, for, Okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah for my yeah, point guard you? essentially is Drew. I think Drew Holiday okay. is going to be the best point guard for them. He doesn't need to score. He's going to shoot and make it when they need it. And, and he plays he defense. Does, he, and he doesn't, he doesn't fall into that superstar category. So, like, he can handle the egos and make sure that people get the ball where they need it, things of that nature. So, like, I really like Drew for – and mm-hmm. obviously defensive purposes, defensive purposes too. So, yeah. I like Drew at the one, Steph at two, um, pro- probably Jason Tatum at three. Um, only because I really like um, Ant coming off the bench and kind of spark plug more. Yeah, exactly. That instant offense, LeBron, and then like you said, I think AD as well. And then, and then uh, you know, sometimes throughout the game, you make your adjustments and things of that nature, get some other guys in there. But that, you know, LeBron, Steph, Bam, um, and AD combo, whoever else you want to put at the one, like that, that four to me so far has been like the best four on the floor. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, uh, I really like those guys playing together and playing really well together. Defensively, Bam and and and, and AD just been taking everybody, you know, everything. So uh, yeah. that that'll be my starting five. And I like the starting five too. Just pl- plug in Drew for me at the point guard. But got you. Yeah, because yeah, I think that that is a better way. It just sucks because I, I like Anthony Edwards off the bench too because he doesn't need to like start the game right. He comes in. And he he's doing yeah. what he's doing to do. He knows. So, he knows who he is immediately. Right. The kind of wasted spot for me, or not wasted so far, but that the iffy spot is Booker. Because he can yeah. obviously get hot and he can hit, but it's like he needs time to like get in the game flow and yeah. he can't really get that run. So yeah. he's the one for me where I'm like, oh, they need like they need more out of him. If yeah. he would just be like a little bit more quick with his trigger, I, I feel like. But I feel like they're just waiting for him to like get hot and really just run away with the game, like and just feed him like that. But for sure, it's not really happened yet. I don't know. Yeah. I'm curious about KD too. I know they. Said oh yeah, he- KD hasn't played at all yet. That's another yeah. thing I forgot to mention. They were saying he probably could have played against Germany, but like probably just being precautious. You know what I'm saying? Um, but you know, KD gets back in there. Obviously, in my opinion, I think you replace uh, Tatum with him. Tatum with him. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. But but um, but then it also kind of you know maybe maybe KD helps book get going. You know, someone that he's used to playing with. Because I think, you know, the biggest thing for some of these younger guys, um, I think it's kind of like they, they don't, it, it's, you know, imagine being one of the best, you know, you're the best player by far on your team, but then you come here and you're like <laughs> the seventh option. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, right. You're like, dang, I'm going to get my touches. My turn. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like can I shoot now? Is this, does this go to LeBron? You know what I'm saying? So, you know, for me, I feel like um, he, you can see it in his face. He, he does not look as aggressive as he normally is because Book's super right. aggressive, sometimes too aggressive. You know what I mean? And he, he's definitely not playing, you know, deep book basketball right now. And I, I think you're totally right. I think they're kind of waiting for him. Like, oh, you can shoot, bro. Like, when you're yeah. in there, go get a bucket, dog. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're, you're you know, just as good as any of these dudes on this team and then go in there and get yours. Yeah, he's got to be assertive for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Pop says Drew Curry, Edwards, LeBron, yeah. and AD. Yeah, that's a I good like one that too, one too, depending on the just, size. Yeah, I like that one too. And, and honestly, maybe it kind of helps too. Like LeBron can kind of save his his juice for later in the game if, if AD or AD if it ants in there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and maybe it allows some of the other guys on the bench to really get going. You know, because you know, when, when Ant comes in, he's ready to score. He don't care who's on the court with him. LeBron, yeah. Steph, it don't matter. He's like, I'm gonna go and get mine. He's been, he's been an absolute beast too. So, you know, maybe Edwards does belong in the uh, the starting lineup, but I. I like I like pop spy too. Yeah, that's what's up. Um, and I do think LeBron at the four, if he just plays bully ball like he can, that's what he's been resorting to so yeah, far. Yeah, yeah. No so, one can just stay in front of him. Yeah. Um. All right. Let's keep it moving though, for sure. But we'll be excited to see that uh, Olympic basketball coming up soon, for real, for real. 
Yeah. Um, and and um and I, I want them to I want them to you know what I'm saying still do what they're supposed to do and completely dominate. This is supposed to be the Avengers, Revengers, all that. Uh, so <laughs> right. they need to suit up, man. They Endgame. need to really suit up. Yeah, Endgame. exactly. It's time for the snap. Um, we talked real quick. You mentioned already the Heat, uh, the champions, which I think is pretty cool. Um, that they're doing the trophies and the the rings now. I think this is like the second or third year that they yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Rings. Talked about this last season too. Um. Which I think it is cool, and I do think you know the game was actually really close, went into overtime. Ooh, yeah, and man. the the level of competition, like in the summer league, keeps getting better. Obviously, you got the backdrop of like these guys are trying to get jobs, or yeah. these tries are trying to like prove themselves after like a, being bounced around to a couple different teams. So, yeah. um, the summer league is pretty dope, and I just think to me it 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 just reminds to me that you know they talked about oh we might expand to two two more teams but is there enough talent to like keep the level of play, yeah. play up like there is yeah. plenty of talent i think For out sure. there yeah. you get some coaching yeah. there's plenty of guys that can do can do their thing absolutely not to mention you know not all those guys are draftees you know some of these guys are, are g league players you know what i mean like it's g league it's yeah. second, it's second year players who are rookies you know the season prior um and then obviously you're you're you know your draftees so like i think there's i think there's plenty plenty of players to get in there and, and create these teams and you know, I know we mentioned I mentioned it a little bit ago, but you know, my squad getting the uh, getting the dub, going undefeated in summer league, um, and the game was actually really good, man. It was totally yeah. Good to um, you know, Miami was down at halftime, but not by a lot. It was it was very very close. Like Came back, way. it was one ten to one ten. We had a three for one thirteen to to, to one ten. I was like, cool, we got it. There was like almost no time left. They come back and score score one two to tie it up. We went to overtime, and uh, I was talking about you know I. I didn't think we were gonna win it because Memphis still had they had Gigi Jackson coming back. They had uh, Scottie Pippen Jr. playing too. Right. Um, so Some like, veteran, more veteran players exactly, considered. Yeah. Exactly. You know, a lot of uh, more so the other teams. A lot of their sophomore players um, are better, kind of rookies in a sense. Higher up rookies uh, had gone home already. They right. played like one or two games, and, and they you know they went back you know to join their their NBA team. And um, not Memphis, they, they kept their dude. So I was like, now we're going to get smacked. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, um, oh, man, like the squad came out well. There's a couple of guys on that team that I'm actually kind of hoping make the team, um, especially yeah. our point guard, Christopher. I think he uh, I think he did more than enough to make this team, especially at a point guard spot, a position that we really, really need help with. And he um, was hitting his threes. Yeah. Yeah, no. yeah, exactly, dude. And and, and where the, our first round, our first round player, too, just is really I, – I wasn't too sure – about him i wanted size i remember i remember saying like i wanted i wanted Edie, you know what i mean yeah. um but obviously he went super early to memphis um but uh yeah our rook played super well i think he had 20 some plus out points uh double digit boards and um yeah man just you know but happy to see you know the the team do well even you know when we had uh when we had uh Hawkins Jr. playing, if you, I was like, cool, we got our, our bet on the team. But yeah, he didn't he's stay. already ready. Yeah. yeah, he didn't stay. He only played, uh, he missed the last, I think, two games of the championship game. I don't know prior to that. So, um, you know, he went back to join Team USA, I think, um, in like the practice squad stuff. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, I was really excited to kind of see them kind of finish this out. Yeah, that was super dope. I do think, yeah, your rookie, where, uh, Kalel or whatever. Kalel, I don't know. yeah. Kalel, yeah. Where, yeah. He, I think he scored at least twelve points in every summer league game. So, yeah. I mean, that's that's legit. That's, that's contribution solid. right off the bat. So, yeah, solid. Um, last NBA story I wanted to talk about really quickly. This happened last week, but I didn't uh, get a chance. I think it happened last Tuesday. Lindsey Harding joining the NBA or the uh, Lakers coaching staff. I thought that was yeah. really cool. I wanted to call that out. Uh, she um, was a number one pick in the WNBA. Had her playing career. Uh, had some different coaching stops. Most recently was the. Uh, head coach for the Kings G League team, um, yeah. but now she's going to be joining JJ Redick's staff. So I think that's pretty gangster. You know, I think um, Redick is putting together a really, actually, really nice staff for the Lakers. Yeah, uh, I'm hoping that they really get going on their player development, like they talked about, but have like a solid game plan coming back for this next year. I'm kind of excited to see how it works out. Yeah, I, I completely agree. You know, we talked about this a while ago. It's like. You know what I mean? Like I always say, man, I, I love a coach who, who's willing to coach instead of someone just because any coach could come in here and inherit this team and be like, I'm probably going to get to the playoffs, but at the end of the day, I still have LeBron and AD, right? Yeah. Um, so, like, but to come in here and, like, to really kind of really put this coaching staff together and get some really fresh eyes, some young eyes, because he's young too. Right. You know what I mean? So, uh, I'm like, is he, older, is he older than us? Like, is AJ Reddick even older than us? <laughs> I think barely. I think you know what I'm saying? Him. Like, yeah. I, I'd, I'd imagine it's not too much older if he, if he is. Right. Um, but um but yeah, man, I I, just, I don't know. The older I get, the more and more I love seeing um 
the, these coaches actually do their job and develop these players. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're going to be in a better spot doing that, de developing your, your younger guys and your supportive guys here, your, your superstars already know what they're doing. You know what I mean? And um, so, yeah, I'm enjoying it too. I'm not even a Laker fan, but I'm kind of liking seeing what, what, they've, what they've got putting together so far. Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. Should be cool. Um, and he is uh, 40. He's he's 84, so he's not okay. very far. He's not very far ahead of us, though. Yeah. Um, all right. So um, speaking of uh, uh, women b uh, balling out, I did want to talk about the All-Star Weekend. Uh, mm -hmm. Team WNBA actually beating Team USA, which this has actually happened before. This happened a couple of years ago, too, um, mm -hmm. which I think is like a telling sign of how good the WNBA is, like that different talent. Um, also, though, the fact that they really take their all-star games like a little bit more serious. Now, obviously, this was high scoring, but it was competitive. You know, both teams kind of felt like yeah. they had something more to prove. So From jump um, too. like most times, like fourth quarter type stuff, you know what I'm saying? They were going at it quick early. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And our girl, Erica Angbuwale, I think is how you say her name. But yeah, uh, she, uh, of course, I'm a good. <laughs> she, she's the it was the MVP. She scored 32 points. All 32 points of her uh, of her game were in the second half, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, she just came out lighting it up, and um, I, I think that was pretty cool. Also, another cool thing is the WNBA All Stars. I've never seen this before. Actually, had a jersey change at halftime. They wore their pink uniforms and like the, those like pink and oranges yeah. in the first half, and then the, and then they came out um, blacked out for the second half, which. I think that's kind of gangster. They're probably like, we can sell even more merch this way, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I almost feel like they had two jerseys designed, but since the other team was just wearing their Team USA, they're like, all right, let's just go. Yeah, I don't that's know. Probably, that's probably the case. Yeah, they're probably like, we, we already made these, so. <laughs> they're like, all right, we'll just have we'll just have more two flavors. So yeah. um, I thought that was pretty different, but I think that they did a good job with the festivities. And then the other thing, obviously, everybody was looking forward to talking about was the rookies actually playing on the team together, yeah. um, Caitlin Clark did drop one dime to Angel Reese. Um, Caitlin Clark had 10 assists, but only four points. And Angel Reese had a double-double, which is mm -hmm. typical for her since that's what she's been doing all year long. Yeah. Um, I wanted to get your thoughts about the All-Star game in general, and then I had a question about this duo as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, love the All-Star festivities, man. It's kind of, I think that's probably one of the, the biggest that they've had in a really, really long time. Um, I, I love the WNBA players coming out. Like, they wanted to win this game so bad. Um, and I love that they got um, uh, uh, Cheryl to be the, the head coach. I, I thought that was really, really dope. You know, so I thought yeah. that was super cool. Um, and then she she uh, she got interviewed, and she was like, I thought it was going to be all fun until I until I, I like, kind of found out, you know, saying for the, uh, the girls, like, how bad they wanted to win this game. She's like, and that's when I was like, oh, damn, okay, I got to lock in now because they really wanted to win that game, and they went out there and did that. And, um, you know, I, I think um, – the WNBA uh, did a really, you know, they, for, they just got that to that to what two point two billion dollar but television deal or something like that. Yeah, like that's gonna be their cut of the NBA deal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think I think that's a big deal. Um, I know they wanted more, um, and I think going forward they're gonna be able to ask for it. You know what I mean? So you know, next couple of years they're gonna be able to ask for for some more money as you know as the, the talent just gets so much better and the, these girls get you know I don't want to say more fun to watch because that sounds very you know condescending, but. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know the, what I mean? the, com the competition, but more fun to watch, or like the you know the, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So um, I think it was a great game, and um, I I, I want to you know I, I think you know we talked about uh, Ant said that Caitlin should be on the Olympic team, and I actually agree with that. You know, what I mean, I know I know their thought process is oh she's going to have plenty of time to get on the Olympic team, but honestly, she's she's. Damn near averaging a double double as well, almost. You know what I mean? She's had some, with assists, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Set the record for assists this year as a as a rookie. Um, and she's I think she's finally learned the the WNBA game because she's been playing extremely well, getting off better shots, um, and and finding her teammates. And you know, I look at a girl, I look at a woman who I who I've always loved in WNBA, and that's you know, the White Mamba. You know, what I'm saying you know DT, and it's like she has like four or five, uh, six gold. She has a crazy amount of gold medals already. You yeah. know, what I'm saying? So I look at someone like her that potentially could have been left off and you know if 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 she and angel reese are on that team that's just so many more jerseys to be sold and and right now they're getting the most watch time they've ever had and you know what i'm saying so i just feel like right now i feel like the WNBA needs to be about their money you know what i mean and not necessarily about people's feelings you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I, I feel like she definitely should have been on that team but she will she will get her chance she will get a gold medal when it when it's time but i just felt like 
they didn't take full blown advantage of everything they could have taken advantage of this season. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. um, Learning scenario. I, th- I think they're not even used to how much uh, attention they, they that they got this season. Right. And um, but yeah, man, All Star game was it was fun. It was it was dope. I agree. I agree. Definitely did a great job uh, with it. I did like the format, but I like Pops's thing too. Pop says they're trying to force Clark and Reese to be friends. No way. Keep it <laughs> chippy. Earn your wings. And I think that I agree with that. Like I like the chippiness. I feel like they're always going to be rivals. Um, and even still, though, they did play together in this game, but I still feel like it's still kind of frosty, you know? Yeah, I feel like, I feel like that's – we're going to do this right now. We're just going to do this for the camera but type thing. Come, come the season. I, I think it's one of those things, too, where it was kind of fun to watch, right? Where it's like, oh, man, these guys have been like rivals, hate each other for, for years, and you get to see them playing together for a couple minutes. You know what I mean? It's you know one, one of those type things. It's kind of like, you know, watching, you know, granted they were never like – rivals or anything like that but you know the all-star game where lebron smacks the floor when, when he's guarding kobe you know what i mean type thing like yeah one of those things you just you just the crowd just wants to see you know what i mean and then they can go back to hating each other tomorrow you know what i'm saying like let's see what they can do on the court for five minutes together and but after that y'all know what it is right i think this is long time like magic johnson larry bird scenario you know this is no, like a, sure. this is a rivalry it stays that way too yeah i, I agree i agree I think the rivalry sells better too than like everybody just being friends, you know. Oh, absolutely. Um, but that, that was we have that no more. We need that. Exactly, exactly. Um, Pops also responding to the um, Olympic team. She said, "No way, hasn't earned it. One great game doesn't make a season. Getting better, on track to be great." She's had lots of great games. But yeah, Pops, are you watching? <laughs> I was gonna, like, I, but I, I get, I get what you're saying as far as like hasn't earned it. Like she is coming in a, as a rookie and as a younger player, but. You know, sometimes they throw the rookie or even the college senior on the on the um, on the Olympic team. Sometimes, you know, for sometimes sure. they have like that one spot for the younger one. It would have sure. been kind of cool, but that's just something too. Like, I guess the thing is, I guess I don't really. I think it'll be good for Caitlin though to have a little bit of a break because he's been playing basketball like year round for like yeah. basically nonstop for, for for a while. So it's kind of sure. cool that that she will get a little bit of break during the Olympics yeah. right now yeah, and she kind of reset in the break. Yeah, she mentioned yeah, you're gonna get. And that'll give her something to be to be hungry for, you know, because, you know, she's getting everything first off the bat. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, yeah. this will be one thing she'll have to wait for. So but yeah. she'll probably be primed and ready by then. Anthony West says Christian Leitner was on the dream team. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like, you know, yeah. when they just kind of like bring in that one that one young player and stuff. So um, Pop said, how many consecutive double doubles did Reese have? I think it was 12, which was the WNBA record, or maybe 13. But I'll right. double check on that. Double check. It might have been thirteen or it might have been thirteen or fourteen. It was it was quite a bit. Yeah, and that was the rookie. I mean, not not just rookie record. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's all time record. Period. Yeah, that's period. Yeah. yeah. Oh, she got fifteen total. Fifteen, 15 yeah. total before yeah. it was ended on that game against Liberty, which I think she was only like one or two rebounds away in the game that it got uh, snapped. So no, no, no. Um, the rebounds she made. She I think she had eleven rebounds in that game. But oh, it was the, like one or two like, points yeah, away. Yeah, she had eight points in that game. So she was like. Eight and eleven, or something like that. But she, yeah. she missed the, and then they they took a point away from her. So she actually had it, but they took two points away from her. I don't remember what what for, but they they took it away. It was like the end of a thing, or like yeah. a shot clock thing. Dang, that's crazy. But yeah, she's definitely balling out too. I think this will be actually a good race for rookie of the year. I still feel like Caitlin Clark will probably win it. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think, I think I, the, the, the you know man, it's a popularity contest. I I'm rooting for Reese. Uh, that's that's my girl. Like I you know I'd love for her to get it, but. You know, from the uh, voter side, it's probably going to come f- go to uh, Caitlin, probably most likely. Unless they, I feel like Cole though would be great. You know what I mean? To, to yeah, that, I can story. see that if they're like exactly to keep the rivalry going and just to yeah. keep the story going for sure. But exactly. uh, hopefully they don't do that though. I don't know that. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Pops wasn't feeling Leitner on the uh, dream team either. I don't, I don't think anybody really was. Honestly, it was kind of it was just a weird placement. You know what I'm saying? But but yeah. yeah. Like and I don't get wrong, like I see what Pops is saying in regards to her having to earn it. Um in 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 normal, if this was the NBA, I completely agree. They don't they don't need the viewership, you know, they don't need the the money. Uh, but I feel like for the WNBA, like what they need right now is money. What they need right now are eyes, and Caitlin brings eyes. So I think from a business standpoint, it would have they could have been mad like she could have rode the bench the whole time, you know what I'm saying? But it's like they probably not because people are gonna want to see her play too, but you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like they, the WNBA right now needs eyes and and retention. You know, I mean that's what they need. They need retention too. So keep keep people coming back to watch these games because 
Yeah. A lot of coaching WNB game gave, even when they were winning the golds. Right. That's true. But I guess yeah. USA basketball was like, nah, we're, we're, we're not tripping on that. Um, but yeah, Diana Taurasi, five gold medals. She'll be going for six this year, which is which is pretty crazy, and, that, and that'll is, be her last yes. ride for sure. So she, she, I mean, she's forty-two. Yeah, forty-two. Oh, yeah, I'm like, yeah, she's she's not a young one, so. And she still balls out though. Like she's Dude. still so good. It's crazy. Dude, yeah, it's crazy. The game um, I looked at against the Sparks, I think she had like almost thirty or put up thirty in that game. She was just draining threes. It was crazy. Dang. Um, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, we'll keep it moving really quickly. Um, let's see, what do we have next? Uh, a little bit of M- uh, of MLB really quickly. I did want to shout out Bobby Witt Jr., who, uh, you know, we talked about him getting second place in the home run derby. Yeah. Since the return from the All-Star break, he's been on a tear. Uh, hitting. Uh, he's 12 for 15 since the All-Star break and um, has had four straight games with at least three hits, which is, like, pretty dope, man. And just to see him... Like, the Royals have had such a great year this year already. I know that it's going to be tough for them down the stretch to really make sure that they actually get one of those wild card spots. But still, this has been a, such a big step forward. And yeah. I love that they're putting a team around him uh, because, you know, they gave him the big money. They knew they had a star. And and, uh, and and he looks like he's, you know, here for the long run. So super exciting. But um, the game against the Diamondbacks the other day, he started off with a triple, then hit a double, then hit a home run. He was going for the cycle, but got hit by pitch. Yeah. Uh, it, it, uh, they, they plucked him uh, in his fourth at bat, but he was three for three going into that. It would have been super dope. The last time uh, Royals players hit for the cycle was George Brett back in, I think, the 70s. Um, and so uh, super, super crazy. I think it was like 79 the last time. So they were talking about how it was been would be, you know, such a feat. But uh, I think they kind of did that on purpose to take him out of his rhythm, you know, um, <laughs> yeah. personally. But um, he's still he's still um, definitely a stud as um, as pops uh, mentioned here. So oh, agreed. Um, and then his first at bat today, he had a double. So <laughs> he came back today, had a double in his first at bat. So yeah, man, he he's an absolute beast, man. Looking looking forward to you know guys like him, just their 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 careers that they're gonna have. You know him, Gunner, those guys, those guys only yeah. so young. Uh, but yeah, absolute stud, dude. Most definitely, most definitely. So wanted to give him some love. Um, real quick, the Braves, I thought this was kind of an interesting story. Not necessarily funny, but they've been injury-ridden. You know, um, their boy uh, Albies actually got um, a, a, fr- a fracture in his hand. Yeah. And so they went out and signed with Merrifield to replace him. And they also um, brought their rookie up, which which uh, his name is Nacho. He, I, I'm excited to see him play, but we'll see how he does. But it's funny. So Witt shows up, and the very first day he gets hit <laughs> on the hand. Uh, um, and, and is out for a couple of days, but luckily he doesn't have a fracture. But they've definitely been injury plagued. Um, yeah. I don't know, man. The Braves, they still have a lot of talent, and they're still doing pretty good as far as record wise. But I just don't know if they'll be able to recreate, you know, their World Series run from a couple of years ago, especially not so with either. these injuries. Yeah, yeah, I don't think so either. You know, what I mean, even even pitching wise too. Sale Sale's been uh, phenomenal all season so far. But you look, you look at you know the meta game. There's a lot of games left. You know what I'm saying? They have a lot of games left still. Um, and like I just, I'm kind of like I, like you said, they're still really good record wise. But I just don't see that kind of same dominance. You know that they had like even just last year. You know what I mean? Last year they were crazy. So um, I just don't really see that this year. Uh, and then a lot of those injuries. You know, their their best players not coming back this season. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, um, That's we'll, a problem. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. But. I'm with you. I don't, I don't see it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's <laughs> oh, and Anthony says 1990. My bad. I don't know why I thought it was like 79 or 80, but I guess I was adding some years because I think they said it was like 34 years ago. So I guess that's not as long as it seems. <laughs> so that's still only the 90s. 1970 sounded better. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. It sounded way better. <laughs> it sounded don't ruin a good story, Anthony. I thought 79 <laughs> sounded way better. Well, you're always um, the old stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Um, the last thing here, Mike Trout, he's actually um, uh, doing starting his rehab assignment in AAA today. Mm-hmm. And just one of my favorite players of all time um, and, and was on trajectory to be one of the greatest players of all time. I still feel like he can have a great, great career. He's obviously a great player. There's no question. <laughs> yeah, him. for sure. But it's just the injuries, man. It's like already, I hate to say that, but I feel like it's a what could have been already with him. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I just hope that he – I just hope that he gets uh gets it back together and um, you know what I'm saying and and can can have a little good a run of good luck and, and not have so many injuries coming up but we'll see 
Um, all right. I think – let's see. We don't have Marcus with us today, but we definitely got to talk golf. Xander, uh, Xander Shoffley, uh at the Open. It's crazy how – such a quick time can turn things around. Xander was always like, oh, he's the best golfer to not have a major. And can he win yeah. the big one? And, you know, will he ever get over the hump? Now he's got two major championships in, uh, you know, two majors in two in, in like two months, basically. Um, so big shout out to him. I love this picture with the cigar. I just think that that's super dope because he's like letting people know like, hey, I'm, I'm here. And yeah. um, he's had a great run in the majors this year. Uh, so I definitely wanted to shout out to him. And then the other thing I wanted to mention, Nick Dunlap, our boy from earlier this year, you know, he was the, at, at Alabama and actually yeah. won uh, on the PGA tour as an amateur this time he won on the PGA tour as a pro. So first time in history that a player has done that one, two, to two events in one year, one as an amateur, one as a pro. So big shout out to him this time. He's going to get to cash the check and, he's, sure. also, <laughs> <For sure. laughs> and he's also, um, He's actually in the top 70, which the top 70 golfers go to the uh, first uh, playoff event, which is coming up next month. So that's a big that's a big step for him. Um, he can get some money. Yeah. Heck yeah. My bad. So um, but um, definitely um, still a couple more cool tournaments, but pretty much that's pretty much it for the majors for golf. Um, I feel like the season kind of winds down for golf as like the as like football starts coming back and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly. So we'll see though. I still feel like Scheffler has one more tournament win in him. Uh, I'm hoping that he can do well in the playoff in the FedEx Cup. I think um, so. That would be pretty cool. But he he's definitely quieted down over the past uh, month or so. Yeah. Um. I think. Let's see. Real quick, college football. Um, college football is basically August 24th is zero week. So that's coming up really pretty quickly, uh, just about a month away. And we're going to start off with Florida State versus Georgia Tech in Ireland, which is pretty crazy. That's the biggest game of zero week. Um, but I think that's pretty cool. I'm excited to see how Florida State bounces back after that, getting snubbed in the playoff and then getting beat down by Georgia. Um, <laughs> what do you what, what do you think about Florida State, their outlook for next year? Um, I hope they build off of it. You know what I mean? I know it kind of sucks here. Your, your star quarterback kind of goes down, you know, late. You know what I mean? So that I know that's, that, that's a big deal. Um, but hopefully they, they can bounce back. I know a lot of times, you know, you it kind of goes one or two ways, right? You can kind of take it as we were disrespected all last year. Let's come back and show them. Or you come back and your 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 pride's hurt. You know, you're, you go you come back with your head down, and now all of a sudden instead of having a, a comeback year, you start start the start the season off 0 and three or something you know what I'm saying and I doubt that because they're still you know still a big school but um it's just you know one of those things where it's, it's completely up to them I think you know and I mean but I'd I love to see how it bounce back here. I know Unk's usually rooting for him so um you know let's see if they can do it. Yeah yeah absolutely I almost feel like last year was kind of like their year to cash in on it. I'm curious I feel like they might be a step back this year. Yeah um, the the conference is getting stronger uh so We'll see, yeah, um, but um, but yeah, but I mean, they had to have a big bounce back year if they want to show, you know, that they were wronged and, and kind of get back up there. So we'll see. Um, college football is back. I think it's pretty dope. Did you pick up the game? No, I'm picking up this week actually. All right, that's what's up. So you'll have to let me know what you think of it. Um, Pops and I got a copy, and it's pretty dope, man. It's fun just to have it back. Um, I know Anthony Weston had, I think he had the early access as well, but yeah. it's crazy. They sold 2.2 million copies of the early, the pre-access, just yeah. that alone. So I'll be interested to see what numbers they end up doing. And I, I kind of want to compare it to like normal Madden numbers just to see. Um, but um, I definitely think it's cool, like the different things, the different playbooks, being able to pitch the ball on any play type of thing yeah. is really pretty, pretty cool. So I thought that was dope. And then one last quick thing I want to mention for college football. Um, this dude, uh, Connor Stallions, right? That was like the center of the whole Michigan, like Spygate thing for last year. Um, yeah. Who was like caught on the sidelines of other teams and stuff like that. He's going to be featured in this uh, Netflix documents, documentary, uh, documentary series, Untold. So <laughs> Untold has done several different like sports figures and different uh different different like weird stories over the past like they did one about the malice at the palace and stuff like that yeah um, so i'm interested to see i'm definitely going to watch this one just to see like that side of the story and like how deep he ended up going oh for sure because you know if there was more stuff involved like he doesn't he probably doesn't want people to fall for it and they probably paid him a bunch of money for this story too so 
I'm, I'm interested too. You know, he's gonna tell everything. Exactly. Exactly. He's gonna tell all. So we'll see what that does, and it's gonna be kind of interesting that it's right before the season starts. But um, <laughs> yeah. it's funny there. You know, they already Michigan. They won. They're the champions. You know, it is what it is. Um, but it's just gonna be interesting to hear a little bit more about that story about how that unfolded. So uh, we'll yeah. see. All right. Um, a little bit of NFL talk. Camps are opening this week. Uh, most people reported either today or tomorrow uh, to uh, actual training camps. Uh, CeeDee Lamb is going to be a holdout, it looks like, so far uh, without him having that new contract. Brandon yeah. Ayuk, on the other hand, after demanding a trade, looks like he is reporting to camp. Um, you got Hassan Reddick that's also holding out. And then Jordan Love, who they said he's holding in, which I haven't heard this term before, but He's there. He's participating in everything except for practice. He's not going to practice until he gets a good until he gets a new deal, which um, is crazy. After only one year, he started kind of shaky as a starter, but he finished strong and he's seeing the payday that Trevor Lawrence is getting and all these other players. So he's ready to get his money too. Yeah, I know. I you know I, it's funny thing. I, I heard I hear talks are really really good, but then right now, so I think that's kind of why he's showing up to everything. And then you know, practice wise, it's kind of one of those things where if I'm not practicing, so I'm not. He probably doesn't want to risk getting injured, right? Right. Um, so I think he will get a payday, but like one season, but you know what I mean? Like, you, I mean, like granted, I get it. You 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 ended it strong, but I'm like, dang, really? Like these guys are getting paid so early. Like I, I just feel like as an organization, I'd want to see more from you. You know what I mean? Yeah. But but I get it. He he sat behind Rogers for so long. He's getting to that point where he does need to get a new payday. You know what I mean? And you know, so I get it. But man, one one season, you know? Exactly. But. He does have them in a, in a tight spot right now too. Um, oh yeah, because he has that leverage they built around him, so yeah. they're gonna have to they're gonna have to pay him. Oh yeah, and, he's um, definitely gonna get paid. He's definitely gonna get paid. Yeah, I think Lamb's definitely gonna get paid too. Uh, the Cowboys reportedly internally have talked about prioritizing him over Dak contract, uh, Dak's new contract. Which is like, if that was the case, then you should have just got this done way sooner. Oh yeah. Um, so I'm kind of a little bit disappointed with that. We even talked about when Jefferson got his. It's like now CD Lamb that has a new range and a new target to look at where, you know, they should have just handled it. Whoever is going to go first is going to get big money. It's going to be the sticker shock, but you yep. don't want to go last. Exactly, and um, exactly. it looks like that's what Jerry Jones and them are going to have to do. So yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see, man. Uh, I, I think it's just very interesting, though, how they have it. Everything set up with the coaches and Dak. Everybody is on their last year. Um, so – I feel like it's a, a boomer bu- a boomer bust thing right now. Yeah. Anthony West says Jerry Co has botched contracts. Yeah, man. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what to say other than I, I, I agree. It's just some different things. But I, I, the thing is, I feel like they still have, like, that earnest, like, trust, like, oh, this is a family business. Like, you know we're going to take care of you. But it's like players don't want to hear that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know. It's not that simple to get people signed. So, yeah. um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Um, but, again, training camp's just starting. That is an exciting indicator that we are very close. Next Thursday will be the Hall of Fame game. So, um, the countdown is on so we can see a little bit of uh, football. But what I wanted to do real quick today is I wanted to play a little game. We have a few um, quarterback uh, actual competitions going into training camp. So, I wanted to – uh, have us predict the day one starter for these three different teams. So first up, uh, Slackers, please play along. But, Strizzy, I want to know, for the Vikings, uh, who do you think is going to be the day one starter? Is it going to be J.J. McCarthy or is it going to be Sam Darnold? Um, that's tricky, but I think who it should be is maybe Darnold, you know what I mean, just to kind of – start things off, you know, I mean, he's a veteran. He looked halfway decent, with, you know, with, with the 49ers. Yeah. Um, and he looked really good in his last, like, six, seven games with the Panthers. He, he did um, literally one game from getting us into the playoffs, you know, so winning, the, winning the division that year, which is crazy. But um, but if you're looking to your future, you know what I mean? Like, just start McCarthy. Let him get his let him get his growing pains in now. You know what I mean? Um, JJ's still really young, too. Get, get their connection going now. Um, so, you know, who they might start depending on, unless JJ just completely just beats him like hard, like they might start go with the veteran, but I, I think you start JJ. I think you start him off with this, get him going early. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, Bryce, like, granted, I know Bryce was the first overall pick, so he definitely starts, but he wasn't ready last year and he's he still got to do it. Yeah. He got his growing pains in and, 
Um, so yeah, I, I think Jake, you drafted him high. You know what I mean? You, you might you might as well get him in there starting. Yeah, I I agree. That's what I would probably do. Sam Darnold has shown what he what he can do, which is you know be like a solid like you know like a backup, like a you know yeah exactly like and yeah. then a a, a a you know a, a like a kind of a fill in starter for you know a couple yeah. weeks at a time type of thing. Um, I feel like his veteranness, like. I think though he might win him the job just because they have enough weapons to where he should be able to like go out there and make it look good. Right. Um, but I, I agree with you. Like if I was the Vikings though, you already drafted this guy, you know what you got in Darnold, just let him be the backup in case something bad happens and just put McCarthy out there and let him, yeah. let him get his, you know, let him get his licks. Yeah. Um, Pop says McCarthy, Anthony Wesson says Darnold until Thanksgiving, <laughs> unless injuries do it earlier. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see. But, um, I could see them doing that too, um, but I, I agree. This just just rip the bandaid, you know, throw yeah, them out there. Exactly. All right, another similar one for the Patriots. We got Jacoby Brissett or Drake May. Um, so far, it looks like Jacoby Brissett is in the is is like obviously they brought him in there. He's an eight year veteran. Yeah. Um, we you know he he started at different times. Did really well actually for the Browns in, in yeah. uh, Deshaun Watson's place. Mm-hmm. Uh, who do you think will end up being the day one starter for the Patriots? I think Drake may, I, you know, I say kind of, kind of same situation with, with Minnesota, right? It's like the only, the only thing that might scare me away from May is that they just don't have a team yet. You know what right. I mean? They don't have receivers. They don't have, you know, guys to help him look good. You know what I mean? Um, Matt Jones literally played with no one. So it's like, you, you know, I know I gave him a lot of crap, you know, for his years just being horrible, but, like, he also didn't have anyone to throw to. Like, his receivers were god-awful his entire tenure there, you know? Also mm-hmm. didn't have a running back. Well, I guess Stevenson's pretty decent, but, you know what I mean? Like, he's injured all the time. You know what I'm saying? So it's just one of those things where it's like, let's kind of see what the Patriots are made of. And, you know, they got, they got a new coach this year, too. You know what I'm saying? Let's see what they're kind of made of before you throw the rookie in there. So maybe Brissett. Um, <laughs> this might be my my aunt answer, you know, Brissett till Thanksgiving and then throw Drake <laughs> May in there. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah. Um, Kind of same scenario. It's like you drafted him high. You you got him for a reason. Get get the licks in now. See what see what you got. You know what I mean. And Brissett can play a really good backup if he's really really horrible. Maybe you maybe you save his face a little bit and bring Jacoby in kind of early. You know what I mean. But yeah, um, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking May, man. I'm thinking May. That's <laughs> so funny. I'm kind of the same. Like I feel like though that that yeah, like the Vikings are in a better spot with their roster around their. Yeah. Rookie. Right. So yeah. you can throw them out there and, and everybody kind of lift them up. I feel the same as you like the Patriots just just don't have much to help them out. You know, it's yeah. not like they're just like, all right, we just need you to succeed. It's like, no, we need you to succeed and you to bring these other guys up for you real. Know, and, and make do with less. So that's why I kind of feel like with Brissett, with them bringing in here, they're like, you're going to have to, you know, you're going to have to ba- basically like take this one and, and try to make us look decent for a little while. <laughs> yeah, right. So. I think for this one, they might just might just start for set only because um, they'll be so bad everywhere else that they need a sure thing at quarterback, at least a steady yeah. thing at quarterback. Um, but Pops agrees with you. He says put May in there. Anthony Weston says same. Brissett will start. I trust him more than Darnold. Um, <laughs> yeah. We'll see. Um, Anthony also says the thing that you have to be sure is dude is ready because you can start a rookie first and you bench him. That kills his confidence. Definitely. And I agree. Like You do Definitely. have to know who you got. But hopefully you didn't draft anybody that's too shaky like that, you know. Um, yeah. I always think back to there are, you know, different guys. But, you know, um, uh, Ryan Leaf, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, like, you know, he couldn't handle it or whatever. Or he kind of was, you know, he, he had some bad things going and he never got the same. But then you look at a guy like Troy Aikman, he came in. They were like, you know, 1-15 in 15 their first year or whatever. They only won one game his first year. Um, but he was learning and he was getting getting what he needed to get done. So, yeah. um if you have a guy that can take those lumps and, and, and just and keep moving and understand like that it's not necessarily him, but it's just part of the growing pains, then put him out there because it's gonna happen at one point or another. That's what I'm hoping for Bryce, man. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Exactly. We got, we got some help now. We got some help now. I mean, way better receivers than we did last year, but I'm yeah. just hoping it was just obviously the coaching staff was god awful. The players around him were god awful. I'm just chalking it up to like he'll have a much better season this year for the love of yeah. God. 
Well, he'll be uh, no, he'll be fine. And I feel like that didn't shake his confidence. He knows what he is. Yeah. And and a lot of people want to compare him to CJ Stroud wide right away, but it's like it's a marathon, not a sprint. You know, it's just yeah. the first year. And um nobody expected Stroud, even though even if you liked him more, to kind of be as good as he was already. So yeah, it's really sure. not a not the right comparison to make. So sure. Um, all right, last one we'll do before we close out today. Um, we've got uh Denver. We got Jared. We got a three threesome here: Jared Stidham, Bo Nix, or Zach Wilson. Oh, Bo Nix. You know what I mean? Like I've always said, especially with football, if you stay in college a really long time, and he did, and had a lot of success. You know what I mean? Like you know, just minus the the the, the national championship. Like um, you you usually come into a situation better off, right? You're smarter. You think you your thinking yeah. process is just better. You're not a kid, and he's not a kid. You know what I mean? Like so, I, I think Bo for sure. Uh, Zach Wilson, third string. You know what I mean? I think Stidham even comes in at second. You know what I'm saying? So um, I think you definitely start Bo. Uh, he's probably my only for sure, especially because, you know, Broncos are on uh, high scrutiny, you know what I mean, from what they did, kind of Russell Wilson and things of that nature last year. Um, I think they got a lot of some, some groveling to do a little bit, you know what I mean, and just kind of getting past that stuff with Sean Payton, you know what I mean? But yeah, I, I think it's Bo. I think he, unless unless during training camp, he just looks horrible. Really bad. Yeah. yeah, really, really bad. You know, but yeah, for me, I think it's Bo. Yeah, I agree. Um, Anthony Weston as well. He said Bo. Pop said Nicks. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I think. Anthony said. Yeah. He said this one. I'm sure, but you definitely know what you have in the other two. Plus, their coach is not patient. Um, I agree. I think this is the this is the kind of one where it's a little bit clear that that's yeah. probably the reason why there's three of them anyways, right? The other yeah. ones you have a, a rookie and a clear cut veteran who's been around, you know, saying it. No, yeah. this one Stidham and, um, and Wilson. Yeah. They've been around a little bit, but they're not veteran like that, you know, where it's like, they're that much far farther ahead than Knicks will be. And that's mm-hmm. a great point you made. He stayed in college a long time, you know, yeah. um, and, and, and he's a little bit more mature. I feel like as long as he picks up the offense, as long as he can go under under center a couple times, he'll he'll be fine. So, yeah, that's what's up. All right, cool. So those are the big uh, quarterback battles. I feel like those are the those are the three that are probably the most in flex. Um, you know, we also have Jaden Daniels for the Commanders. I think he's insuring to start yeah, too. I so I don't think that's good. even really a competition. Caleb Williams for the Bears, obviously, he's going to start. Oh, yeah. um, so uh, so those are those are um, you know not too much. Oh, Anthony West says, how about the Raiders? We'll have to do that one. We'll have to do that one. Um, they, got again? they got O'Connell for Aiden. They got Aiden O'Connell. Who did they draft again? Um, no, that's who they drafted, but. Um, Is it? Oh, yeah, you're right. Aiden, oh, Gardner they, Minshew. Yeah, Gardner Minshew, that's who it is. I was trying to think. I was like, who is their veteran? Um, yeah, Gardner Minshew versus Aiden O'Connell. Yeah. That's uh, – I don't know. <laughs> it's tricky know. because Gardner Minshew plays well when the he plays well when um, the expectations are low, right? When he comes in mid-season or not, not right, right, right. Comes in sometime after there's already a starter, but when he's the clear-cut starter, he doesn't play as well. You know what I mean? So um, that's kind of tricky. I think I just really like him as the backup, and like, it's kind of same thing. Like it's a new Raiders team. We're already looking. Um, they're already talking about trading, uh, oh boy. Uh, so I saw something that looked like they were talking about trading. Um, Adams? Uh, what's, the receiver? Uh, what's the receiver? Adams? Devontae Adams? Yeah, Adams. Yeah, Devontae Adams and uh, Brandon Ayuk, like straight up almost. Like, mm. yeah, I think, I think that'd be insane. Like watching watching Adams in, in uh, San Francisco would be, would be nuts, in my opinion. That's a huge upgrade. I, I love Brandon Ayuk, but that's a monstrous upgrade. Right. I, I, that's an interesting one. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I do feel like the Raiders, though, is so weird because they best be let Car Car go. Um, you know, they're trying something new. They tried Stidham last year, right? And then yeah. now um, they let Jacobs go too. So it's like I oh, love yeah. I love Zamir White from Georgia, but he kind of came out of nowhere. Like he was undrafted. He's a great running back, but it's like their weapons are so different, you know. And now they got Brock Bowers over there. I'm like, just give him somebody to throw him the ball, please. For um, sure. But I don't know. I, I Pop says Aiden O'Connell. Anthony Weston says Minshew based on money, but I would start Aiden. <laughs> right. So, yep. Yeah, we'll see. But, yeah, I, I kind of agree with you, though. Minshew, we know what he is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. It's going to be tough, too, because I know, you know, Antonio Pierce had a really good kind of last couple of games, you know, the season to kind of secure the head the head job going forward. 
but you know mm-hmm. he's gonna be under a microscope. You know what I mean? Like you know he's gonna be kind of watching him, kind of see how he does. So I know that's probably gonna play into his role too. Like who gives me, excuse me, a legitimate chance to to win some of these games? You know what I mean? And kind of secure my spot as the the head coach for this job. Um, yeah, I, I definitely think he earned it. I, I think he earned it. Um, but you know, it's it's hard sometimes coming in as getting the full time job after being an intern. You know what I mean? So uh, we'll see what happens. I think as long as he keeps him afloat. You know, with those little weapons, and right. as long as the defense does well, then they'll they'll be going fishing next year for like Dak Prescott or or a, a, another big free agent. So yeah, that's unfortunately how I see it going down. I feel like it doesn't really matter who their quarterback is this year; it's like a placeholder. Um, for for real, <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see. Um, all right, that's what's up. Uh, did another great job today, um, holding it down uh, again. We want to shout out to our brother Mad Marcus as always. Much love to him um, and, and all that he does to support our show. Um, and then as well, all of our stackers out there keeping the comments coming, being a part of the show, watching whether you do that live or we've seen our downloads being keep going up on the podcast side. So if you're listening later. We see you. We appreciate you, too. Um, but until then, I think we'll keep things rolling. I think we got a lot to look forward to next week. We're going to have football. Um, which yeah. you know, albeit it'll be it'll it won't be no starters or anything like no, that. We still yeah. have some we still have some football to watch. So that is super exciting. Um, it's almost here. So mm. um, until then, oh yeah, and we got Team USA basketball. The real deal is on starts on Sunday. So oh yeah, for sure. So we'll be back talking about more of that. But until then, that was episode two fifty six of Say Like a Champ. It's your boy A Dub and your boy Strizzy. Thanks for listening to Say Like a Champ. Engage with us on Instagram. Share your thoughts and you might just be featured on the show. Be sure to subscribe on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you pod so you don't miss next week's episode of Say Like a Champ.